Hello, my friends. Here we are taking a look again, once again, at how to give some voice feedback, some just quality feedback to our students beyond just simple points. We are now going to take a look at the fourth concept uh, that may or may not be of benefit to you. So we've taken a look at voice memo, voice recorder in the first one. We then took a look at the talk and comment extension. We then looked at the moat extension. And now we're going to move away from extensions and we're going to be exploring an add-on called Kaizena. So Kaizena is much more robust. And so this may or may not be a good choice for you, especially if you're in this quick transition of remote teaching and learning. But it's definitely one for you to consider and think about uh, for the long term because you can start to do some very uh, high level stuff in terms of the feedback that you can give students. So we're going to keep using the same document that we've been using just so you can kind of see all the comparisons of what we've been doing so far. And if I'm in a Google Doc here, I'm going to go up to this tab here for add-ons. And I've already got it installed. But what you would do is you would go down here to get add-ons right here. And you're going to then search for Kaizena. So I'm going to go ahead and type that in. And when you search for it, it's going to pop up here. It already tells me mine installed. But if not, you would click on it. And then you would install for your slides and your docs. And it would then install it for you right there. So once you have it installed, you're going to have to set it up. And so I thought I would do this setup with you so you can kind of see just because it's, it's not the fastest or the easiest, but once you're in, it's, it's, it's a really great tool. So once you go to add-ons, I'm going to go to Kaizena. I'm going to open it up. And your first time through, you're going to have to create your own profile just so it can populate with some things that are going to be very helpful. It can provide lessons and skills and things that could be of benefit to you. So you can see here I have to identify what I am. Um, for you, you'd pick your, your thing. I'm going to go ahead and pick um, consultant here. Um, let's see if this picks up. No. What's this educational consultant? Let's create that. Now, one of the great things about Kaizena, I'm going to go ahead and show you this here before I get into the tool, is that they have a ton of great videos that you can use that are already created for you as a teacher as well as to share for your students. So if you end up using this tool, uh, they have a great repository of videos already that you could share because your kids can then use this tool to interact back and forth with you. And so on their channel, um, they've got 10 good videos right here that's going to show students how to respond to feedback, how to review feedback design for your students so you don't have to create those instructions. I think that's a really nice feature to have. But back here on the tool, you can see here's my document and Kaizena opens right here. And I've got four choices. I can record a voice comment, which is what we've been looking for. I could track a skill. Um, I don't have any of those things set in yet, but I, I can show you what that looks like. I can attach lessons, so if I want to add on and start to differentiate my instruction, whether it's remote or in the classroom, um, or I could do a text message, which is good. And so, yes, we can already do that in the Google Docs or comments, but if this is a, a tool you're going to use all the time, you might as well just keep it all within one ecosystem. So say I wanted to give a comment here for, for this part. Um, you can see that it highlights. It allows me then to change the color depending on the skill. So I would recommend, a lot of people recommend that if you're going to do voice, you keep it all one color, um, that type of thing. And so this voice message is pretty straightforward. Um, it starts to record. You've got 60 seconds, just like the, the mode exception. And when I'm done, I would hit stop, and it's going to post. So you can see that it's right there. It highlights the document, the link here in green, which is connected to this highlight. And then the audio is right here. Um, it starts to record. You've got 60 seconds, just like the, the mode exception. And when I'm done, I and so you have those options built in, which I think are, is really nice for you to use. So we've seen that. Um, I could download it there if I wanted to. I could show the highlight. I could fix that. You know, I've got a lot of things that I could do um, as that educator. Now, the other thing that you can do in here, and, and I haven't done this enough, so I'm just scratching the surface with these types of things. But let's say... Um, here of a skill. I can start to um, search for a skill. I don't have anything in here, but let's say I started to have a bunch of these that I wanted to focus on. Um, I could have these lo loaded up. These could be skills that are specific to my classroom, um, things that I'm trying to teach. Um, I could also go to that link that says manage skills on the dashboard. 
I could populate with some things that they have in here. And so this could be very nice as you're creating your units of your priority standards that you're focusing on and key things you're looking for. You could start to bring those skills to light um, within the tool. So you can see here, I'm not going to go through this whole process, but it walks you through how I can create these skills. I can share rubrics. I can manage lessons. I can also check students' skillness progress. Like I can start to do quite a bit with this tool. It's, it's very, very robust, which I think is really nice within here. And so I could go in here. Um, I'm just going to put this in here. And what happens then is I can create different levels. And this is what's, what's really cool. So I'm going to put level one. These could be descriptions then. Um, I'm not, so where I'm typing this in, you would actually write in what it is you're looking for. So this could be the skill, especially if you're standard-based grade, that could start to be really, really powerful for the kids to get the feedback to see where they're at. So, um, you know, I'm just going to type these in here just so you can visually see it on the doc. But these would be the criteria that I'm looking for in order to be, you know, emerging, meets the standard, whatever it is that you're using as you're going through. So as opposed to having tests, maybe it's capitalization, maybe it's persuasive writing, you know, whatever it is that, that it might be that you're trying to do. Okay, so now that I have that skill created, I could highlight here, um, and let's say that I wanted to, this was a key focus, I got all my skills are going to show up here. I could search, and once I start to create a nice criteria of skills, I can select that. And then see here, I can give a level of what I want that skill level to be, what I want to assess it at. And then it would show down here, I just have level the level label, but this would be the criteria. So then if I were to post that, they could see, okay, so for you know uh, persuasive writing, this here, I marked it as a level three. If I want to get to level four, they, they can look at that criteria to see what it is that they want to do. So you can start to build this in with your classroom teachers as a team and have this. Kids can respond and edit, and you can start to have this interaction over here all built in with this tool. The other cool thing that is in here is this lesson. And so I don't have any lessons, but if we were to go here, you could start to populate lessons. And so if there was things that I wanted them to go back and do, so I'm thinking about stations. I'm thinking about when you're you're working with a small group of students on skill development and you have other kids working independently on stuff and you want to give that feedback, you know, I could put this test lesson in here, whatever I want it. I could leave comments. I could add things in here. It could be voice or text, you know, um, and I could start to create things that are live in here for them to use. And so maybe it is, you know, checking out this link here. I could type this kind of stuff in here as we go. And so you can see that that link is boom, right there. So now back over here in these lessons, if I were to say, okay, I see that there's a recurring issue here. They're using um, they're there and they're wrong over and over again. I want to show a quick little video, have them kind of learn and see if they can figure it out themselves. I could attach a little lesson. I could select that right in there. And you can see now that that's there. Now what I might want to do actually is change the color, there we go, to yellow so I know that that's there. It's post, therefore it's yellow here. There's the lesson that I want to link to. So now they know that they have to follow up, do some work and go back. You know, and then finally, we could do text comments. So if I were to highlight here, I could go to text. You know, I know you do something much better with this, but just so you can kind of see what this looks like. So now students are going to have all this stuff on the side. So when they are using Kaizena, they can go in. They can actually leave you voice messages back. They can respond. Um, they can do the lessons. They can clean things up. They can mark a resolve. They can mark fixed and edit. They can. There's a lot of things that they can do with this tool, similar to the comments that we can do here when we assign work to students. But here it can be a little more robust. It can be much more built in, more specific to your standards. And once you have it built in, you always have it. So think about reusing from year to year. So this is one I really think is, is good thinking about long-term development. Um, and I think there could be some real value, especially if you're working uh, with a group of teachers. You can share this work out. You can have your own collection and database, especially if you're using Google Docs quite a bit for this type of work. So once again, we have a tool that allows us to give quick voice feedback all built in, and maybe that's where you start. 
and start to then, as you're doing work, maybe sample with a, a skill, maybe sample with a lesson and start to build that out if this, this, this really works for you. Um, but at least you know that, that there is this option as well. So now we've looked at four and hopefully you're starting to figure out what works best for you um, as we explore good ways to give feedback to kids in asynchronous environments where we're not always being able to work with them face to face. All right, my friends, you know the drill by now. Stay awesome. Peace.